All right, today uh, apparently we're rebuilding the hydraulic bumper. We're just putting some new seals in it, cleaning it up. Uh, put some kind of trash in there. Um, got two new seals here, and let's see here's the old one. I don't know if you can tell, but the new one's actually a little thicker, but it's the only ones I could find. I don't, I don't think it'll be an issue really. This, this shaft here is so much longer, and then that's another thing. This shaft here, I don't know if it'll focus. You can see it's it's got some pitting in it, but short of having that machined, which apparently costs like a thousand dollars, we're just gonna try to run with it. The the, the bushing here, this is all one part, but uh, it's, uh, you see there's a, I don't know what that is, bronze or something, one of those bushings. It's a little worn out, so this, this shaft kind of has some play in there, and the issue I was having was with these old seals, I just stick it on there. That shaft moves at all and it starts leaking. I guess you can't see it, but it gets a little gap right there and it just starts leaking right out the seal. And these are really old and hard, and this one actually cracked. So I got these new ones, and uh, they're actually a little tighter. I, I measured them, they're a little, a little snug. And um, they seem like you can move them move the shaft in here and it more and it still seals so hopefully uh, hopefully that works because I really don't want to get a new bushing and then hopefully this doesn't tear up the bushing so I polished it the best I could I mean I don't want to take sandpaper to it but I repolished it cleaned it real good um, this is the pump housing here, and then, uh, I mean, I don't know what you really call this stuff, I'm not any kind of expert on hydraulic pumps, but <clears throat> got it apart, we're going to clean everything, put the seals in it, put it back together, and we're going to hope it doesn't leak, so let me do that. All right, <laughs> don't mind the hammer. <clears throat> Got it back together. You see that seal outside of it sticks out. Ah, focus you. Anyhow, <clears throat> sticks out a little further, but the actual seal lip looks like it's pretty much in the right spot. Um, got all bolted together here so let's take it over to the engine we just got this put back together I did uh, I'm hoping it's not gonna leak it, it feels tighter um, I haven't changed the bushing I've ever I, I think these seals are quite a bit smaller but they fit the shaft good a lot better than the old ones uh, let me stick let me stick the rest of the hydraulic hose on here be right back. All right, I just uh, stuck this hose on here, and uh, still need to cut the keys and a bolt for this. Um, I just set that lever arm in there. Uh, there's a lot of work to do. I'm just kind of doing this by myself right now, though. Uh, the rest of the team's working on the design report that we have to turn in, and. That pretty much leaves me. So, we're going to be running this engine, and then because this valve is just going to be open, well, of course, I don't want to move one handed. I don't know how other people are doing this stuff with somebody else holding the camera. When the valve is open, the flue is going to be pretty much free to just pump up out of the bucket, get sucked in here. This probably isn't going to work, it's probably going to collapse whatever 
going to get ran through the pump and it's going to make some some torque is going to be on this pump because there is you know internal friction which is pumping the fluid even without any kind of restriction it it's, it's going to spin a little want to spin a little bit so I'm sure you know we're going to get some kind of little reading just with it idling and then what we're going to do is we're going to close off this valve not all the way but we'll close it off a little bit and then once you start uh, throttling the engine up and the RPMs increase and the starts uh, pumping more fluid uh, <clears throat> it's going to start getting built up against this valve so it's going to increase in pressure here and because of that it's going to get harder to turn the pump so the pump is actually going to want to turn with the engine and that's going to move this arm move with the pump and it's going to push on the force sensor and that's how we're going to get the torque reading and uh, horsepower is actually a kind of function of uh, torque over speed over engine RPM so we have a computer that's going to log the engine speed and we're going to probably manually take measurements of the torque readings for now until we can get maybe an Arduino set up. I do have a couple microcontrollers just sitting around but you really don't have the time we're kind of rushing this um, but this is going to be an ongoing thing. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be working on this engine for a couple years, so if you guys stick around, uh, you should get to see some pretty cool stuff. So right now we're at port, we're on port fuel injection. We have a little throttle body, you know, just like anything else. It's got its own TPS sensor. This is the map sensor. It's really tiny. I'm surprised at that. Um, this is the fuel injector, well it's underneath it here, but that mounts down over top the fuel injector, so it runs just like a port fuel injected car, about 60 psi of fuel pressure, and then that's wired up to the ECU, this looks like a mess right now, this all goes in a, in a room, and we have everything mounted pretty nicely, it's just over here for welding, so you know, it sits in here, and then uh, once again, this is all just kind of put together to see if we can get the engine running right. Um, we got some fancy glassware that we're going to use to measure fuel consumption. And then we'll be able to calculate uh, brake specific fuel consumption, which is basically um, like the units will be grams of fuel per kilowatt hour. So basically how much fuel it's using per the amount of energy it's producing. Um, this is just an aftermarket fuel pressure regulator. They sent us one that came with the kit, but I don't like it. Now we can actually read the fuel pressure. And our fuel pump it mounts down here. And th these clear hoses actually are rated for fuel. I don't really like them, but they work for now. They probably won't make their way into the car. We'll get a fuel filter and everything. Well, it's not a whole lot. I, I'd like to start this thing and you know just weld a little bracket here to hold the pump and just see if it even pumps fluid. However, I can't really start it in this room. We got smoke detectors right there. They frown upon us when we set those off, which has happened. Um, I can't I can't move this thing by myself. So that's gonna be it for today. Alright, uh, I just thought I'd show you guys also this the tuning software used, um, this is called ProCal, it's from Ecotrons. Uh, there's really no videos on YouTube of it, so I just throw this in here. I feel like I left you guys hanging. Um, this would be ignition timing table, so up across the top we have uh, engine load um, based off of the map, and then over here we have engine RPMs, and then each cell. You know, so you want to increase the ignition timing at, you know, this would basically be throttle pretty much all the way closed and 3,000 RPMs you could, you just type in 25 degrees before top dead center. Um, let's see what else we can see here. We gotta get rid of some of these. <clears throat> if any of you guys have seen Tuner Studio for Megasquirt, um, you can see that this is not nearly as uh, what you would say graphically nice. <laughs> um, 
These are the volumetric efficiency tables. Once again, most everything is based off load and RPM. And those are the volumetric efficiency that you would enter in, and that's how it uses to calculate how much fuel to add at that at that load point. Let's see if I can't find the uh, go up here to calibrations fuel system. Um, well, you know it's hard to hold this and look at the same time. Well, there's a fuel table in here somewhere. I forget where it's at. I haven't done too much with it, but just something that's, uh, you know, you could change is like after start warm up fuel. You know, the engine's cold, it's going to take more fuel, especially on a port injected engine especially on throttle body or carburetor that's but even on port fuel injection you still have uh, wall wetting so you can uh, increase uh, the amount of fuel for temperature of the engine yeah there's also you know it's got all the sensors that you would see on any kind of fuel injected car I just thought I'd show you this program a little bit I, I'm still trying to learn it it's, it's auto tuning function it's so here um, it tells you uh, what you can, uh, what has it changed, and it uses uh, speed density and alpha n um, strategies. I'll go over that more in detail later. But basically, because it's only a single cylinder engine, at higher loads, the vacuum doesn't it doesn't change a whole lot. It, it goes to you know almost atmospheric pressure, and then that's about it. Um, and there's a lot of, what's this? There's a lot of uh, vibrations, I guess you'd call it. Because uh, it's one cylinder engine, it's a tiny manifold. If we go back over here and show you this manifold, it's, I mean, basically, you know, it, it's not a lot of um, volume here. So each uh, oscillation, each uh, pressure wave, you know, really affects this map sensor. So you get a lot of, not really noise, but just a lot of vibrations in your map sensor reading. It makes it makes tuning it hard. So it sometimes some of those tuning tables only look at the throttle position and the uh, engine RPM, and then based off of that, it kind of knows how you know if you're at wide open throttle and you're only at a thousand RPMs, then it knows you really got a lot of load on the engine. Where on the map sensor, it may not be able to get a good enough reading. So the map sensor is good, um, more at lower RPM, lower load conditions. So probably most of the tuning is going to be done with just the throttle position then. Well, I just want to show you guys that. Thank you.